And today, you know, I think you know that today is the so-called Ascension Day. So a celebration day, no one has to work. And in Germany, the people do not, especially in a, the former GDR, they don't not celebrate the Ascension Day, they celebrate, they call it Father's Day or Man's Day. So that means the people have leisure time, they could read a book today, but nearly no one does. Because they are all going with a bike through the beach or to the beach or with a hand cart and honestly nearly all of them get drunk so the old man and the young man we i think we will see a lot of them so it's good that it's early in the morning because in the afternoon the whole city yeah you know it okay uh, our itinerary first of all we will directly go to Warnemünde, the seaside resort of rostock and I think as we are here, we should have a brief look at Warnemünde. Used to be an old fisherman's village, very picturesque. And then we ride directly downtown. And there I won't make too many stops because uh, it's not really worth to see. These are the suburbs, all these prefabricated buildings, which are typically for the Eastern Bloc countries, for the former Eastern Bloc countries. And give you some introductions then in Rostock. And finally, we will end at least or latest at 12 o'clock high noon at the place or square of the university where you have been already yesterday, as I heard. Okay, and if I raise my hand, that means stop. Okay, so the one behind me should do it like that too, maybe, so that we won't have an accident. Yeah. Okay, let's go. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask me. <laughs> Streets with around about 190 houses called the front row and the back row. Nestled directly at the old stream. You will see the old stream, which used to be the entrance to the harbor until 1903. So it always used to be a small fisherman's village at the city of Rostock, the councillors. Bought Rostock Warnemünde in 1923 to secure the entrance to the harbor. As Rostock is 10 kilometers far away, land walks. And the people of Warnemünde could control or block the entrance. And therefore, the people here are still angry about Rostock because they were not allowed to do any crafts. They were not allowed to bake their own bread. They had to go to Rostock and bake their bread there. So they could only work as Nautic pilots, or fishermen, or seamen. That was all what they were allowed. Or fishermen, yeah, I mentioned fishermen already. That was all. And then, now the main street, main street, the only 13,000 guest beds. So tourists staying here in the high season. Especially for example, in that hotel. That used to be the high building there, the Hotel Neptune. Building erected in 1971 by a Swedish company, and it was called the Stasi Hotel um, because there were bugs everywhere, of course. And very famous guests, Fidel Castro, did stay here. And when the reunification took part, of course, all the politicians of uh, the Federal Republic of Germany and many important people, actors and so on. And when they erected that building, a lot of beautiful or sometimes not beautiful young girls used the opportunity to get to know a Swedish worker or builder because they wanted to marry him. Then they were allowed to leave the country. During the GDR times, it was not allowed to enter in the night the beach. We were not allowed to surf here because he could flee. Many people tried. Even one man in Rostock invented the scooter, so what the divers have. And another one um, created a submarine, but he failed twice, and many people died. Just three miles far away from the coast, there is international sea. And there were Danish patrol boats, Swedish patrol boats, West German patrol boats, and so on, trying to get them before the GDR patrol boats caught them. There were huge watchtowers everywhere, and the Russians had big trucks with uh, spotlights, so you could see the old, uh, the whole coastline. 
Well, do you have any questions so far? Homemade jewelry. Um, of course, behind me, the lighthouse from 1897. You can see the light up to Denmark, to Getzar. That's only 25 sea miles far away from here. And behind the lighthouse, that's the so-called tea mug or teapot in the German language. Um, there was a predecessor building, which was destroyed in 1945, which looked like a tea mug, a teapot, uh, in the so-called Bauhaus architecture. Now it's a new one, which looks a little bit like a tractor monster. Uh, a very famous building. Famous architect known as Ulrich Mütter. Oh, sorry. He designed that Wait, architect. Too much. It's a so-called okay. English word, and there is no English word for it. Hyperschalen construction. So it's a roof with 1,600 square meters, seven centimeters thick or wide, and he designed roofs for um, mosques in Jordania, and in West Germany he designed the planetarium in Wolfsburg. And therefore, Wolfsburg, so the, the biggest company of Wolfsburg, VW, these German cars, um, they donated or gave 5,000 VW Golf to the GDR. These were the first Western cars here. And probably you know that the people had to wait up to 15 years for Trabi, Trabant, for example. There's a nice joke. A Texas oil billionaire reads in a newspaper that there is a car where the people wait up to 15 years for and he thinks my god that must be a great or a fantastic car I must have it and he orders one of these cars and the government here decides okay he pays with dollar we have to deliver the first car to him so then they deliver the car to the United States ship it in a container he receives the car has a look at the trubby invites all his fellow oil billionaires and after the big celebration, he says, follow me. Goes to the Trabi and says, well, look at that. Usually, you wait up to 15 years for that car. And they already did send me after three weeks a model of the car. <laughs> so that's a joke. 100% they were analphabetics up to the 20th century. And therefore, they had so-called house marks to sign or to mark all their property. For example, the fishermen uh, marked their sailing boats, their sails, and so on, and their houses. These are the two last remaining house marks we have. You see that one on the gable and that one, both from 1760. So everyone knew this is the house of Mr. Broad hearing of the fisher, yes? And even in the churches, the pews were marked with these house marks. Everything they marked with the house marks. I'm very interested to choose um, Rostock then, be, or Wannebinde became prosperous. It started, that started in 1812, uh, the first guest came here. It was a forester named Mr. Becker, and he even took a bath in the Baltic Sea, what the people in Warnemünde couldn't believe at all, because no one did that. No one was swimming at that time. So uh, that was in 1800, 1812, and eight years later, 1820, there were already, during the year, 600 guests. And later, when Rostock Warnemünde was connected to the railway system, more and more guests could come from Berlin, Hamburg, and so on. But there were only these 190 houses, these typical fisherman houses. This is the front, uh, the back row. Uh, the front row is up over there, the next one street, the next street directly at the old stream. So there were no accommodation for the past guests. The people who lived here, the fishermen, uh, moved into the back of the house during the season, and the guests uh, lived in the front of the building. And later they did add it. They did add these annex buildings, these glass and porches or verandas. Yeah? And still, by the way, the people as accommodation for the Berliners. Because the people from Berlin were used to have the, were used to the possibility to look out. 
And still, therefore, the people here call all their guests Berliners here in Warnemünde. Also, never more than 10% came from Berlin. And there's a famous saying, two fisherwomen meet on the street on the market day, and one asks the other, oh, do you have guests at the moment? Oh, yes, we have Berliners. Oh, we have Berliners too, but ours are from Helsinki. <laughs> so, they call all their guests Berliners. And then, more in, uh, when, uh, in the 1860s, and the, the people here were allowed to do what they wanted. Because that area belonged then to Prussia, and uh, many captains, we had many captains in Warnemünde, and from their journeys they took uh, yeah, a lot of things. For example, like these two dogs from England, or from Delft. And uh, this is a nice story, because either the dogs can face each other, or they don't face each other. Well, and if they face each other like this, you can ring here at the bell because there's harmony at the moment. Yeah? Between the couple, if they don't face each other, you know that there is a struggle at the moment. Yeah? In Finland, those dogs are unique. You see, um, these erratic boulders are from the 13th century. That's indeed Rostock's oldest building that used to be called the Danske Bor because it was a castle of the Danish. So it was occupied by the Danish very often, Rostock Barnemünde. Later by Sweden, yeah, a lot of uh, these northwest uh, area in Germany during the 30 years war. The only building in the front row and back row is the front row. All the other buildings, so the old buildings, all the fishermen houses were gable front because you take taxes according to the wind of the house. And that was the only passive possibility where you could get alcoholic beverage officially. Because the people at Vanamunde were not allowed to brew their own beer or to sell schnapps, but they did nevertheless. Yeah, they brewed illegally. And I would suggest to you, because it's very narrow, there is under reconstruction, that old bridge from 1903, behind that, that's our railway station. And have a look on the bridge because that's the nicest view. If you go on the bridge and look to the northern direction, that's the old stream. You see these wonderful old fish trawlers, but they don't go fishing anymore. Now they sell either they sell fish bread rolls or uh, amber or whatever. Or you can hire them or charter them to go fishing. Yeah, because uh, it doesn't make sense to fish. By the so-called Baltic is uh, the largest and the most powerful tech boat in the Baltic Sea, 11,500 horsepower. And this is, there still is written Vano there, that means Vano shipyard, um, founded in 1947 by the Russians. Uh, but now it's called uh, Nordic Yards. Since the unification in the last 20 years, there were four different own owners. For example, from Norway, Acker, Acker Yards, it was called Acker. And then they sold it to uh, Nordic Yards. Nordic Yards is a Russian investor. But they are all unemployed, out of work. So uh, Europe is just too expensive. It's too expensive to build ships in Europe. The Hyundai wave in Korea. Yeah, of course, because Hyundai, uh, South Korea, they build, I don't know, 100 container ships a year, per year. And much cheaper. So that's a problem for the European shipping company. And it was founded by Russians uh, in the end of the World War II. More than 300 huge wreckages were on the ground of the Baltic Sea. Passenger ships like the Bremen, Hansa, Berlin, massive big ships, and they shift these ships and repaired them or converted and transformed them to military ships and to uh, whalers as rep reparations for the World War II. So that is, by the way, the reason that uh, West Germany, of course, developed much, much better than East Germany. And one of the reasons is that uh, West Germany, we were uh, supported by the um, United States. 
what what's what was the plan? I, I don't. Marshall. Marshall Plan. The Marshall Plan. Well, of course, not only West Germany, all countries would suffer. Great Britain too. You know the word spam, for example, come or derives from that. Spam was a spiced pan. And even the people in Great Britain, they couldn't see in their packages every day they had to eat spam. Therefore, spam in the, uh, at the email is called spam. Yeah? There's a famous spot from Monty Python about spam. Just check it out at YouTube. I like it very lot. Um, well, and that's the reason that it developed much better in the German Democratic Republic. And of course, it was a socialist country with a planned economy. So the five years plan. They had nothing to build. We will see it. I won't make too many stops now before we are in Rostock because we will drive now through from here to downtown Warnemünde. There are five quarters of these prefabricated buildings. Rostock used to have a quarter of a million people living here in 1989, so in the year of the unification. Uh, now we have about 200,000 people. And at the end of World War II, uh, Everyone had 7.6 square meters to live. So that's the cell in a pre-trial prison. Because many, 45% were destroyed during World War II. And it was very, they demanded uh, apartments, of course, for the workers and so on. And during the GDR times, Rostock developed very well because um, they opened here in 1960 the international port, which was called the gate to the world. But of course, there was no gate to the world because the people were not allowed to leave that country. Uh, only for the seamen. But they had the biggest sea terror nation in Europe. 15,000 seamen, the biggest fish trawler company or factories. 108 huge fish trawlers were located here in Rostock Marine here. We will pass by very soon. But now we go without. Yeah, the same thing in Norway. Yeah. And, but it was invented in 1816 in Germany where first it were uh, people from the railway and other people. But everything under order. So for example, in Germany everything is correct, you know. <laughs> it's not allowed that the whole times a week, uh, eight times to get there in Denmark, to Trelleborg in Sweden, to St. Petersburg, to the Baltic states and so on. And this is the international port. 15 kilometers length of piers, uh, no container terminal, but a coal and oil terminal inaugurated in 1960. And you see our iconic toilet. Inaugurated in 10 July, it was a founder there, erected and finished in 1960. So 51 years old now. The international port, what they called the gate to the world, it was a very important port. Because Russia only has two ports without, which, are, which are ice free all the time. Sometimes no port, because even St. Petersburg there's ice. And Czechoslovakia they didn't have a port at all. Of course they are, they are not at the sea. Well, uh, second thing, we have seen now, uh, we're driving through one quarter of the city now, which is named Groß Klein. That means big, small. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And uh, this is only one quarter of nine prefabricated quarters we have in Rostock. Most of the buildings are six stories high and they used to have no elevator. Now they have an elevator. Also, they were forced to erect by an elevator which is higher than five stories. So the architecture is called the basement, the basement, and they call it the first floor floor zero or floor null. So they had only four stars. That was their trick. And on the left hand side, this is our, the former International Garden Exhibition area, which took part here in 2003. Uh, we can't drive through it. It's now opened, but we have to pay there because it's now an area to stroll and for concerts and so on. So in 2003, when the International Garden exhibition was here there were 900 exhibitors and over 2 million people visiting the international garden exhibition now it's used for concerts the day before yesterday on tuesday there was uh, the most popular most famous german songwriter here herbert grunemeyer and he opened his yeah season here but it did rain all the time it was an open air concert ship a sailor ship 
the so-called uh, Friedrich Franz II, was built in 1851. And since 1991, as I mentioned, there is no ship building anymore. And uh, since a few years, uh, the main hall, which passed by very soon, was transformed into a shopping mall. And directly at the waterfront side, or at the seaside, that you erect at the moment, exclusively uh, apartments, either to rent or to buy. Because Rostock is, honestly, it's one of the most uh, expensive cities, meanwhile, in our the east of Germany, much more expensive than Dresden or Leipzig, as many retired people like to live here along the coast. We have a coastline. I think you know Germany is divided into 16 federal states, and we are here in the so-called state of Mecklenburg, West Pomerania, a typical agricultural state, a natural state. We have three national parks, but only a population of 1.5 million inhabitants. Oh, a ladies' day. That's not allowed, usually. <laughs> Today's the man's day. But it's nice. Um, and we have a line, so a coastline of 1,900 kilometers here in Mecklenburg, West Pomerania. And many retired people want to live here to spend their last days along the coastline because it's really a great nature. Well, this is a bunker. This is around for my young people now. Uh, the meters are three meter fifties thick, so it would be more expensive to blow it up than to uh, yeah to sell it. And there are concerts, um, six huge uh, buildings, so you can uh, make a concert there. You hear nothing, hear nothing here, right? And this building, the hall 206, is now used by um, our uh, city theater. So the theater run by the city of Rostock. Uh, they are playing here in the summer, or during the summer, I think this year it will be West Side Story. Mm. I like to be in America. You all know that, I think. Well, I don't like to be in America. I feel very well here. <laughs> Until 1990, to enter that area, we will drive through the so-called City Harbor a little bit now, because the Russians, for example, did unload their military equipment here. Or the harbor railway bringing all the tanks and so on to uh, camps of the Soviet army and now it converted totally it's a promenade now restaurant next to restaurant and so on and this is our highest monument you see that monument there from 1970 inside there are five rooms five halls and above that's from 1980 made by Reinhard Friedrich yeah, you see them, two men, like God created them. Uh, that shall remind, or what may remind the people of the um, revolution in 1917, during World War I, when the Marine soldiers in Wilhelmshaven and Kiel refused to go to war. Only 79 hours without any wind. So, uh, and that's very bad for rheumatic diseases. And therefore, Mr. Bartelsagen invented that beach shirt for the lady because she wanted to go to the beach. So that beach shirt, first it was a single chair, which protects you from the sometimes very strong sun and of course of the wind. And I mean, you have seen them all. Let's have a look at it. It's very comfortable. Um, because another guy, Mr. Falk, he invented two years later. He was a worker of Mr. Bartelsmann, a double beach chair. And a beach chair which you could... Could you assist me, please, and put that out so you can put it back. Oh, no, there's a plant. <laughs> but usually you can put it back, backwards and forwards. And you can take that out for your legs. And it's very comfortable to sit there, especially for a couple or for people falling in love, and you have something for your sundowner. Well, and the good thing about the beach here is, I have only a towel only at the beach, and as it is always windy, and you eat a bread roll, you get immediately a sandwich. You don't get a sandwich in a beach chair. That's why it's called sandwich. <laughs> 
Well, very soon we will be. We are already downtown, more or less. <laughs> Not even look inside that area. And nevertheless, we are not allowed to enter that area at all. And this is already downtown. These are three fabricated buildings too. This is called the Northern Old City, uh, built in the 1980s. The big buildings are already the Long Street. This is our main parish church, St. Mary's, where one group of you is visiting at the moment. The church, uh, St. Peter's, and the so-called City Harbor, their Stadthafen, runs up to these old warehouses from the 1930s. And even behind, they continue to build modern apartments now. There's the peninsula, the Timber Peninsula. So we have a length of six kilometers and more and more restaurants. And today it's not very busy because many people go into the nature because of Man's Day, Father's Day. Yeah. And in 10 minutes or five minutes, we will be there at the square of the university. Look at your view, look at your colour in it. Well, uh, by the way, if you look to that side, to the right hand side, the wonderful gable there, the brick gothic gable. Do you see it? Uh, this is the central library. So well, only the facade is original. But of course it's closed on a celebration day. And behind me, that's called the Fountain of Joie de Vivre made in 1980 and 48 sprinklers and noodles and if you look to the single sculpture you can imagine why it is called the fountain of joie the river yeah i like to score for example pizza has been playing has been playing finland in soccer yeah. okay thank you well and we are right here in time if that's very unusual for our region because we have a saying here, or there's a quotation, maybe you heard about it, from uh, Otto Duke of Bismarck, the founder of the German Empire. He has a, there's one quotation of him, he once said, When the end of faith comes, oh, I go to Mecklenburg because everything there happens 100 years later. So, that was my last announcement. I hope you enjoyed it a little bit. I Wish you a wonderful journey and thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Are we arrived at the building? We don't like the building. Hundreds assembly of the librarians. Does it work? Huh? 
I greet uh, all from all uh, from Finland uh, from Sweden, uh, but I greet especially uh, the guests from Turku because Turku is the twin city of Rostock in more than 50 years. I'm very happy that My name is Gabriele Bening, I'm the Vice Mayor of Bützow and I'm very happy to see you and uh, we are very proud to can show you our Kobes House, Kobes House in English. Uh, my English is not the best, I, have, uh, I am not so much uh, practiced, that's why I read from this pieces. Sorry. Firstly, some interesting facts about Bützow in this house. In, in Bützow live just about 8,000 inhabitants. As a former university town and bishop's residence, So everyone, uh, this is Bruce Wall and we are staying here overnight. And we are staying at two locations. And the first one is where we will be eating today at 8. So that is before shower time. I believe. 